we're going to talk a little bit more about recursive sequences. All right, so if we want to just jump right into an example here and find a recursive formula for this. A recursive formula needs two parts. The first part that it needs to have is it needs to say a sub 1 equals something. You need to be given some information. So you need to fill out that first. The second thing you need to do is you need to figure out what is happening from one to the next. Okay, so what I mean by that is, what do you do to the previous term? To get to the next term. Okay, so these are the things that you're looking, and this is key right here. What do you do to the first term to get to the next term? But you need to tell everybody where you start. So there's two steps here. So on this first one, 2, 7, 12, 17, 22. If I want to find a recursive formula, the first thing I'm going to do is say a sub 1 equals something. What does it equal? Well, my first term, that's term number 1. So a sub 1 is 2. So that's the first part. That is half of the problem. And then we have to write a sub k equals what? Okay, so now we're looking to go from our first term to get to our second term. What do I have to do? Well, I could add 5. Okay, so if I add 5 on this, I get to 7. Now, well, if I add 5 to get from second to the third one, I get 12, so it does work. Plus 5, plus 5, so I always add 5. So it seems like the thing that I do is I add 5 starting at two. Okay, so this is how I would explain what is happening, but how would I write it? Well, I have my first term, so to denote my first term, what I'm going to do is say a sub k is going to equal the previous term. So I say a sub k minus 1, because that would be one number before the a sub k term. And then I'm adding 5. So this would be my recursive formula. This would be in words explaining what is happening and then this is the formula so make sure you understand the, the differences in this next example we want to find the recursive formula again so we need to first understand what is happening we need to find our first term because that is my a sub 1, and then we need to discover what is happening. Okay, so my first term. My first term is obviously the first number that comes, and so that is 100. So that is going to be my a sub 1 term. And then what happens? Okay, so what is happening? To go from 100 to 20, I could subtract 80. But that doesn't make sense because going from 20 to 4, I don't subtract 80. So I'm going to look at dividing because it's smaller, so I'm going to divide it. If I divide by 5, I get to 20. If I divide by 5, I get to 4. If I divide by 5, I get to 4 fifths. So it seems like once I start at 100, I divide by 5. So I divide the previous term by 5. So now I write it as a formula. a sub 1 equals 100. Always start with that. 
and then I want to find my a sub k, so any random number, any number in the sequence, okay, so I'm going to take my, what did I do? I took my previous number, and I divided by 5. So, previous number divided by 5, well, how do I write my previous number? The previous number is written as a sub k minus 1. It's always written like that. So I'm going to write it a sub k minus 1 divided by 5. So that is your recursive formula. For this next example, we're going to do it a little differently. We want to find the first five terms. Well, the good thing is this is the first term. So I already found one term. So I want to find a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. And that is going to be my final answer. So I want to find all those things. Well, a sub 1 is negative 4, so I'm going to fill that one in. So now I just need to find the rest. And to find the rest, I use this formula. a sub k equals 3 times a sub k minus 1 plus 10. If you want to look at it a different way, you can say that your a sub k term, or your next term, you, we could write it like this. Next term equals 3 times the previous term plus 10. So if it makes more sense to write it like that because you just take the previous term and put it in, then you can do it like that. So to find my a sub 2, I'm going to take 3 times my previous term. Previous term was a sub 1, or negative 4. Because a sub 1 comes before a sub 2, and then I add 10. So when I solve that, I get negative 12 plus 10, or negative 2. So I'm going to put negative 2. So now my previous term is negative 2. So a sub 3 is going to equal 3 times my previous term, which is negative 2. And then I add 10, giving me negative 6 plus 10, which is a positive 4. So I put in 4. So now a sub 3 becomes my previous term. So to find a sub 4, I'm going to take 3 times my previous term, which is the 4, insert it right in there, plus 10. So 3 times 4 is 12 plus 10, and that equals 22. So my a sub 4 term is 22. And finally, my a sub 5 term is going to be 3 times my previous term. My previous term is 22 plus 10. So that's going to equal 66 plus 10, which is 76. So my a sub 5 term is 76, and that is your final answer. You just list them all out like that. And now for this last example. This time I give you a little extra information. I give you the zero term and then the first term. Okay, so this one, we still have to find a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5, but I just have, you just need a little extra information to do that, so I give you that extra information. Alright, so we're still looking for the same thing, Um, so we just include a sub 0 equals 1, and then a sub 1 equals 2. And now we're going to have to use both of the previous two bits of information in order to solve. So our formula, if we want to rewrite it, we can say next term equals 
equals uh, previous or two terms ago. Two terms back. Okay, so that's going to use two terms previous plus two times the previous term. Okay, so a sub two is going to equal two terms back. Two terms back was the a sub zero, which is one, plus two times the previous term, which is two. So I'm going to take the one and put it in here. I'm going to take the two and put it in here. And then I solve. So I have one plus two times two is four, which equals five. So my a sub two term is five. Okay, now the next one, I'm going to be looking for a sub three. So if I look for two terms back, then that would be my a sub one. So I have two plus two times the previous term. So I'm going to take that and put it in there, and that is five. So that gives me two plus two times five is ten. So I get twelve. The next one, a sub four. I need two terms back plus two times the previous term. Okay, so two terms back is the five. And the previous term is the 12. So now I solve here. Five plus two times 12 is 24, which is 29. So 29. And finally, the last one a sub 5, the uh, two terms back plus 2 times the previous term. So two terms back is the 12, the previous term is the 29, so what I have is 12 plus 2 times 29, which is 58. So if I add those together, I get 70. So 70. So my final answer is a sub 0 equals 1, a sub 1 equals 2, a sub 2 equals 5, a sub 3 equals 12, a sub 4 equals 29, and a sub 5 equals 70. So there's a few more examples on the recursive formula to hopefully help you clear some things up that you might not quite understand yet. You can go through some more practice problems, come up with some of your own practice problems, and then you should be ready for the quiz over this material.